Good afternoon and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Defining Virtuosity. I'm Odin Rathnam and today we are continuing in our study of Wolfhart Etudes with number seven, marked Allegro Moderato. Um, some of my uh, advanced students asked why I uploaded uh, or chose to upload so many of these preliminary etudes. Um, I teach students at all stages of development from learning how to hold a violin and open strings through preparing for international competitions. Um, so obviously the ones who are playing caprices they want more help on that and so they get that in their lessons. Um, but I, I actually uploaded these because they provide a great um, resource for advanced students to do easy things faster, more um, freely. And these patterns that we encounter already in the first um, book of Wolfhard are not unlike what we find in Mozart symphony outer movements, um, and Beethoven and, and other classical composers. The language is quite similar. And with that in mind, I sometimes have my advanced students play some of these etudes very quickly and with a wide variety of strokes and um, a lot of freedom to uh, sort of toy with them and play with them to develop flexibility at various tempi and, and through various stroke patterns. Number seven is one that I like to do that with. Um, the the first thing that I will I will show you is just how simply we we learn the left hand, um, focusing again on the the slur keeping us honest in our left hand actions. The moment we slur anything, um, I I don't care uh, if it's from Don Juan. Uh, if you slur. The only thing that's going to make that clear is whether every lift and drop is accurate in the in the left hand um, and the shifts and the string crossings. So slurs have a way of making us extremely honest about our left hand. Um, so I, I will have a student that's playing um, Moto Perpetuo practice four and eight note slurs for a long time with a bunch of different rhythms before even introducing the difficulty of the bowing that has to be done uh, relaxed for however many three and a half minutes or however long that piece lasts very comfortably and at a very fast tempo up to 186 to the quarter. Um, number seven can be done this way but we start slow all right again I'll stand and back up. The idea here is to really focus the attention on this being accurate all right they can start doing rhythms so and the reverse then long plus 
Alice Triplet. short short long long short 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 long long short short long long short long long short short long long short okay or long short short long long short short long so that would be or drew an analogy here for us when practicing rhythm of a hunter um, with their uh, with their target shooting sighting the a little bit above the bullseye a little below a little to the left and a little to the right to get a better sense of where the center was and for the brain these rhythms um, make playing evenly much more easy um, so you would do th the, those combinations plus the uh, combinations help. The next thing I want to introduce is the notion of the zip file or the speed burst. In either fours or eights. This way. What essentially starts happening is that the brain is shortening the distance, the times between synapse firings and we're we're digesting things in groups rather than individual notes um, when we play very fast uh, <coughs> there is no time to think Sonata, for example, these these zip files are much easier for me to remember when I'm playing than what every note. Um, so the we start with the rhythms, we then go to the speed bursts. This sets up the left hand to eventually be able to do it at a pretty fast clip. <laughs> so on and so forth. Then we can start introducing the strokes. Um, for beginners, just be a grand detaché. I like to, when I think grand detaché is one of the hardest things for students to do is to really open up, up the arm and stretch the bicep. In order to do that, I like to have them do broad detachés really towards the tip opening up. I, it's not even that I necessarily have them think of half bows, but that, it, that can be good. But really that they work in this range where they have to push out and in with the arm, where you really have to do a little bit of that out and in um, as an exercise. It, it just sets up the arm well um, for, for playing. You won't see me doing it in concert nearly to that degree, but as an exercise, we, we know that it really trains the arm well. So for now... Uh, bring up one important point when I do it this way. When I'm really giving the arm that workout, one of the things that I'm very conscious of is what my uncle used to call rubbing your belly and patting your head and reversing it. That is that you can be playing a very solid um, bow stroke, but 
when you do that, there is a danger that you might squeeze more in the left hand. You should actually do the exact opposite. I'm just using the lightest possible lips, lifts and taps, uh, lifts and drops in the left hand and trying to keep my thumb as relaxed as possible, the joints of the fingers collapsible, the hand in the shape of fifths, isolating the base knuckles here so that I'm not using my shoulder or anything else to put notes down. Yeah, I'm not even using the, the, the wrists. I'm not turning the hand as I go up. Rather, I'm having my hand turned enough that I can drop the entire tetrachord, right? Whatever it is, wherever the half step is. And that independently of any, any shoulder or thumb pressure, I can suddenly lift and suddenly drop any finger. It's the suddenness of that action that creates articulation, not how hard you hit. It's the suddenness. An explosive lift, an explosive drop in terms of this, the speed. That creates the articulation. And it also brings us um, uh, in, in touch with our rapid fire muscles rather than, than uh, the strength oriented ones, the endurance and strength, strength oriented ones. And on the violin, that is very important. <laughs> That, that everything is very, very loose like that, yeah? So, I, when I'm playing this broad detaché, I'm still remembering what I did here. And making sure that that's, if anything, an instant before the strokes. grace notes saying for you to understand what I mean by if anything the sense is that the left hand is just ever so slightly ahead never feeling rushed by the bow to the contrary the bow can play very fast we want the left hand to be comfortable within whatever tempo that we're doing to that we add uh, slurs and separates like number six <laughs> reverse it doing the two separates first. You can also do two ups, like number six. Alright, we can also do four down, four up. Or two down, six up. down and 14 up by two measures and work on the staccato that way. So these combinations of studies make it possible for it to be um, played by a beginning student or a very advanced student. Uh, with a, a advanced student, I also like them to practice their sautier and orchestral dynamic you know, uh, this is very, very valuable because we have so many pieces in the orchestral literature where we have to do an agile stroke and the sound total of the section is unfortunately marked pianissimo or piano. So learning these agile strokes from the Wolfhart studies um, makes doing Midsummer Night Dream uh, uh, or um, the scherzo from Eroica, all of these types of, of light things, much easier because you, you've learned what the natural bowing uh, uh, bow bouncing capability is of your stick. You've learned the balance of it. My, all of that stuff becomes so much easier. Yeah. So there you have it. Uh, that's why I'm doing uh, wolf art studies. In case um, the more advanced people are wondering. Um, 
Thank you for listening to this channel. Again, thank you also to my sponsor, um, Jim Grandin, for his generous underwriting of the recording of all 40 um, Wolf Art Studies. Please, uh, if you enjoyed this, subscribe to my channel and share it with friends. I'd like to um, help as many people out there as possible. All of these videos are free, and I, I hope that they'll help as many people out there as, as, as I possibly can. Thanks for watching.